The green tide surges across the battlefield, crushing all before it. As you dodge insults, stick bombs, and DACA in equal measure, the last thing you hear before meeting the business end of a choppa is a mighty WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
going back to that orc soup, I guess, um, the clan that I use to maximize my melee output is, is the Goff's clan, because that basically takes the Daka 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 rule and it puts us puts it on melee as well. So now you have these guys who have four strength, four attacks, and any sixes to hit are now exploding, allowing for an additional attack with that weapon, uh, which is which is just it's it's nuts. I mean, you have guys, you have all these strength four attacks coming in. You're absolutely clearing hordes, and that's what orcs do best. They love to fight, they love to punch things, and you're you're punching everything <laughs> as many times as you can with that clan culture. The best units I find personally for that synergize with orc boys or the best uh, yeah units and characters. First of all, you want your war boss. He's just a force multiplier. He allows um, not only does he get in and he can help open those big tough units that your boys might struggle with, like knights and stuff like that, because he's usually armed with like a power claw. But he also gives them the ability to advance and charge, which. They have their 5-inch movement, which isn't necessarily the greatest, but now you're advancing and charging, so it helps you, helps you get into melee a lot quicker with your boy squad. So the war boss also has a special rule called Breaking Eds, and uh, that allows him to, any orc unit within 3 inches of him, if they fail morale, he can inflict D3 mortal wounds upon them, and then the test is considered to have been passed. So even if you do fail that morale, you do have that orc unit that's down lower, um, you can you can still save it because your war boss is just going to punch a few of them and uh, the rest are going to fall into line, which uh, can really help save a squad if you're trying to hold an objective or something like that. The other characters I like to include are your weird boy. Your weird boy has a variety of powers that can help out orc boys. Uh, the two big ones are the jump. Everyone knows it. Everyone fears it. Um, and it, it basically allows you to redeploy a boy squad in the psychic phase as long as you end more than nine inches away. This opens up turn one charges and stuff like that, which can really make an opponent alter their deployment style if they know that you have a weird boy and they know that he's taking to jump. You might not even have to use it. You'll just watch them react to it because of the threat that it poses. No one wants 30 boys in their lines turn one. No one does. Um... The other power I like to use with him is Warpath. Now, Warpath, you pick a unit, and it adds plus one to their attack characteristic. So remember how we said with our Slugga Choppa boys, they now have four, they had four attacks base going into melee? Well, now they have five. So now you have up to 30 boys with five attacks each getting in to your opponent, and that's just... Watching their face fall when you roll so many dice and you have you there has to be handfuls you have to do volleys of these things because no one can hold that many dice uh it's it's just it's one of the best parts about being an orc player honestly <laughs> aside from the weird boy and the war boss there's another character i shouldn't say character a piece of war gear that is almost an auto include with your orc boys and that is the the custom force field so the custom force field projects a uh a force field dome that Nine inches, or sorry, every model wholly within nine inches of the uh, model that is carrying the custom force field benefits from a five of invulnerable save. Now, that used to be any orc model, and it also used to be only against ranged attacks. As of Psychic Awakening um, Saga of the Beast, the custom force field has changed, and we haven't had an FAQ to clarify it yet. So at the time of this video... Currently, we're looking at, it only affects clan units, so depending on your list structure, you might have to include multiple sources of custom force field to uh, benefit your multiple clans that you may or may not be taking. It also now doesn't only affect ranged weapons, as per the wording, it just affects the model itself, gains a 5 of the moment will save, so they have it in combat as well. Now you have your Big Choppa Squad with their five attacks, because you cast Warpath on them, and now they are rocking a 5 up and vulnerable save. Um... I don't care how many attacks Marines get for being charged. That's not going to help them out <laughs> against a unit like this. Other units, though, that that's it for characters for my preference. And um, if you have any other characters that we haven't talked about or ones that I you think I missed, uh, please let us know. I mean, there are lots out there. The other another unit that um, can help out an orc boy unit is ironically another orc boy unit because as we touched on before, mob rule allows. Uh, a unit to have its leadership equal to the amount of models within it. And mob rule also states that it can pour over. It's an aura effect. 
so it'll affect other orc units that have the mob rule special rule within three inches. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep track of, but say you have an orc unit that is five models, and it is two inches away from another orc unit mob that has 30 models. Well, now they're both leadership 30 because that aura, basically, they're all ganging together, they're all raring to go, getting in the fight. They all have really high morale, and it's represented by that special rule, so it's really good. Uh, even if if you're running units together, even if one of them starts taking casualties, they can still rely on the leadership of the bigger unit next to them. So that's not going to hurt them so much. So we've talked about the units that might be able to buff them. And then there's transports as well. Now, we've already established that we want our orcs in big unit sizes. So trucks may be out of the, uh, be out of the picture for us because of their smaller transport capacity. One unit that isn't, however, is the battle wagon. Now, the base battle wagon has a transport capacity of 20, which means it can still hold your boys, and once they pour out, they still get their bonus attack. Um, not only that, but there's a very interesting way to, uh, to run a battle wagon, and that's through the Vigilist book, uh, Vigilist Defiant. And that gives us the specialist attachment, the Blitz Brigade. The Blitz Brigade has nothing to do with Orc Boys. Nothing at all. So why is it in this video? Well, it unlocks a stratagem that allows a battle wagon to transport more than its transport capacity. In a, um, essentially, you pay two command points and an orc boy unit within three inches of this transport, can you can pull it off the field and then redeploy it within three inches of where the battle wagon ends its move. Now, it can't charge afterwards, so that's, that's where a lot of people write it off. They're like, why am I going to move this unit, pay two command points to send it up the field, just so it can't charge and get shot for a turn. Well, if you remember, we talked about our big mob of shooter boys and how good they are at clearing small units, move blockers, chaff, and the like. Well, now you have your 20 guys potentially in a battle wagon. You've now moved up a model or a unit of 30 along with them. They may not be able to charge, but they're ready to shoot. And you can also combo this with the jump. So now you have not only 30 from the jump, you have potentially 30 from being transported by the stratagem old on boys. And you have the 20 who are residing in the battle wagon. So that's 80 boys right in your opponent's face, potentially turn one, which no one wants. You could have anything in your backfield. No one's focusing on it at all. The last thing, like I, I said, the last thing anyone wants in their lines, turn one's 30 boys. Imagine 80. Something to think about. We've just touched on a stratagem there, old on boys from the Vigilist Death. So let's get another stratagem we might use with our Orc Boys squad. Uh, the big one and this is up there with the jump with playing with your opponent's psyche is it's endless green tide. So it allows you for three command points to recycle an orc unit that has been reduced to half its models or less. And basically you, at the end of your movement phase, you pull them off the table and you redeploy them within six inches of a board edge and more than nine inches away from enemy models. So, and it doesn't cost reinforcement points. And that's the best part because basically you have your 210 point unit that might've just got gutted in your opponent's shooting phase. And you're like, oh, well, that was a waste of points. Not necessarily. You got those command points, and you just redeploy them, and then your opponent, he, he has to start all over again. So it is an endless green tide, if you will. Um, the other stratagem I like to pair a lot with my Orc Boy squads is the Goff's specific stratagem, and that's uh, Scar Boys. So for one command point, you take an Orc Mob, and you pregame, and you make it all the boys in that squad strength five. So... You have all these boys churning out all these attacks, getting the exploding attacks from the Goff uh, uh, clan special rule, but now they're all at strength five, so you're wounding your marines on threes. You're taking on centurions and aggressors, and you're wounding them on fours, and they aren't going to make all those two-up, three-up saves. They just, they aren't. Uh, so it's a really good way to leverage your boys' amount of attacks with the quality and the strength as well. Uh, one thing I have found, however, if you just do it on one squad, they have the biggest target on their back. They're gone, turn one. So however many boy squads you're running, um, I would pay as many times to make them all Scar Boys because that just, it, it adds more headaches for your opponent to potentially deal with. They know that this thing's bearing down on them. They know that it's going to hurt when it gets there. Uh, so, and there's, they... They can't shoot all your boys. That's that's the one thing I like to I like to say. My mantra is boys before toys. Uh, you have as many boys as possible. They can't kill them all. <laughs> um, other honorable mentions for stratagems: Grot shields. Uh, if you have another, if you don't have another unit, infantry unit in your army that you want to protect, 
there's not it's nothing to throw ten grots in front of your mob of boys and have them absorb some of the damage for a command point, right? Um and the other one is get stuck in lads. Now this is another three command point stratagem, and it uh basically allows your boys or any orc infantry unit to to fight twice. Now Three command points is a lot. Um, you might be better served to save that for an endless green tide later on. At least that's my preference. Um, but if you need that unit dead, you need that objective. It is there. You have it in your back pocket. Uh, so by all means, utilize it. Now, other things we can do with our boys are the sh other strategies. Uh, the new Psychic Awakening book, I know I've touched on it before, um... It didn't give orc boys necessarily a lot uh, for what for the unit itself. Uh, it gave us the access to specialist mobs, and there are two of them that do affect boys. Uh, the first one is the feral boys. Uh, it gives them wild boys. It allows you to um, roll 3d6 and then pick the highest for your advance roll and pile in 6 inches, which is... It helps you get into combat quicker, but... I don't know if it's worth losing a clan trait necessarily when you have other ways of getting your boys up the field pretty quickly. Um, and the other specialist mob that affects orc boys uh, is the mad boys. Um, it basically turns your orc boys into chaos spawn. You roll a d3 and you get a result uh, each phase. Or you get a buff each phase. Neither of them are very good in my opinion. Uh, but... By all means, let me know. If I missed a gem with either of these specialist mobs, I love my Orc Boys. I run a lot of them in all my lists, no matter what kind of uh, theme I'm going for. Now, we've touched on my preferences. There's endless ways to run your boys, just like it's an endless green tide of boys. So if I've missed something or you have something you think that would work really well, be sure to comment down below. Let me know. Uh, let everyone else know, because... Uh, we <laughs> We all love, uh, we all love fighting with our boys. Right on. Thanks, guys. Sponsored by... <laughs>